Hello YouTubers, it's Angela Logan on this late, late evening, Monday, September 23rd, 2019. I'm going to give you, um, a, today I'm going to bring a video about true crime. This is a story deriving out of Baltimore, Maryland. It is a very old story. The crime was never solved and a program was made about this subject matter on Netflix. The subject matter is of a nun who was murdered by the name of Catherine Sesnick. And yes, I'm about infatuated with the story like so many I have come across over the years. I am a true crime fan. I've always liked crazy stories. I don't want to say crazy because it's probably disrespectful to say that. Just stories in general of crime. As a child, I grew up watching scary movies. My father used to take me to see scary movies, and I don't really want to make a comparison to that, but maybe that's where my infatuation is derives from was watching just horror movies and then as I became an adult I watched you know uh all teenage years watch stories mysteries different things of people lives but Netflix is running this documentary this short documentary of seven episodes on its network and this is how I came across this it is called The Keepers it is a story about Catherine Sesnick she uh, was a nun and she went missing and was later found murdered. So I'm going to give you a little bio on her and then I'll go into the information pertaining to the Netflix uh, series. Catherine was born on November 17, 1942. Uh, she disappeared November 7, 1969. Kind of ironic that born in November went missing in November. Well, anyway, she was discovered on January 3rd, 1970 at the age of 27. Uh, 27, excuse me. Um, had she lived, Miss Sesnick would be 77 years of age, November 17th of this year. She was a teacher. She taught English and drama at the all-girls school Archbishop Keogh High School in Baltimore, Maryland. Her body was found near a garbage dump in an outside suburb called Lansdowne. Her death was ruled a homicide. And in the autopsy, it said she had a small fracture of the skull. Okay. To date, no one has been charged with her murder. And I don't remember if it's even considered an open case because it's so crazy this crime but they did have a suspect in her murder and it was a fellow priest at the school at Keogh High School by the name of Joseph Maskell or Joseph Maskell and another lady went missing around the same time that Miss Sesnick was missing excuse me and her name was Joyce Malecki and when you watch the documentary, you'll hear uh, information about Joyce Malecki as well. Because Joyce Malecki was, uh, went missing on November 11th. Mind you, Miss Sesnick went missing November 7th of that same year. Joyce Malecki was found two days later, later on November 13th, 1969. Her murder is unsolved as well. So here you have two women... Gone missing within days of each other. Both to this day, 50 years later, both crimes unsolved. And they have somehow tied Miss Malecki's death into uh, the death of Miss Sesnick. That they think that they are related due to the fact that they both, you know, went missing at the same time. Okay, Miss Malecki, her autopsy, uh, autopsy states that she was either strangled or drown, which I find that kind of odd because I don't even know how those two would even be correlated to uh, in the same category. But anyway, one of her one of her non-fatal wounds was that she was stabbed in the throat. It says I just pulled that up off of Google. Um, the reason why I want to talk to you all about Miss uh, Catherine is because I watched the documentary. 
fell asleep a couple times, wake back up next day, rewatch it so I can get the whole, you know, full synopsis of the story. But I took to her because she seemed like she was a very nice young lady. She was a young girl who went into uh, the nunhood. She wanted to be a nun. She met a young guy who she corresponded with. He liked her a lot. He was willing to give all that up, being a priest himself, to be with her. But she declined because she felt like they both had a calling for the Lord to do work in the priest, being a priest and being a nun. So she goes off to the school to work at Keogh High School. But she comes across information. This is what is said by one of the students present day that she had information that the priest Joseph Maskell was molesting and raping some of the girls at the school so it is understood that she has this information she's going to do something about it she tells one of the young ladies that she's going to do something about it but then lo and behold the lady goes missing nobody sees her she isn't found until two months later and found dead and as you watch the series, episode for episode, they're going to tie in everybody affiliated with Catherine from students who are now adults and elderly. And they're going to give you their synopsis on their relationship to her, her demeanor, everything. And this case goes so deep that fast forward in the 90s, women started coming out speaking on what happened to them at the hands of this priest, Joseph Maskell, that he raped them, and he also allowed other men to rape them, that he brought other men into the school, police officers, other men, taking them to get uh, examined by a gynecologist by the name of Richter, and he, at the time of them filming this documentary um, on Netflix, he was living, and they did an interview, and he played dumb like he didn't know anything, and he don't have any information about anyone's death or this and that, and he made a comment saying, well, I haven't talked to Masco in 25 years. Well, just because you ain't talked to him in 25 years didn't mean you weren't participating in the rape and uh, groping of young girls, because one of the ladies who was named Jane Doe, who first came forward with information of being raped by the priest, she made it known that when she went to Richter's office, the gynecologist, that she got up on the table, Masco, the priest, knew exactly everything, how to get her up there, excited about it, raped her, and then Richter was following the, the girl's breast. So, I mean, you can't even imagine that. A young girl going to a gynecologist with her priest. And the priest is raping her. And the, uh, and the gynecologist is fondling her breast. It's like, are you serious? And that's what's so baffling about this documentary. It's that there is alleged 100 plus girls who gave information to a detective who has been obscured and name never given for, for obvious reasons. Given this information to a cop that they also were sodomized, whatever, raped by this priest and other men, and yet nothing has transpired from them coming forward and giving the information. And I, I just think it's baffling. And for you all who like true crime, such as myself, I'm sure you're going to find it's a very interesting story because it's just unbelievable that the city of Baltimore in my opinion, conspired right along with this priest, the Archdiocese of Maryland, I mean, of Baltimore, you, they all were in cahoots with each other. Because think about it. How could a young lady back in 1969, 60s, 70s, go to the authorities about this priest and priest when he was allowing policemen to come into the school and rape the girls as well? So who were they going to go tell? That's why I'm sure they kept it quiet because some of those girls were introduced to other men in Maskell's office alongside policemen. Okay? So you couldn't go tell your mama or daddy, oh yeah, by the way, uh, the priest is raping me and oh yeah, some police officers, they, be, they come in the room too. It is the most baffling 
true crime story I've seen thus far. Lately, I've been seeing so many crazy ones. It's like they're running neck to neck because it's like I watch one on Netflix, The Making of a Murderer. That one's got me baffled. Probably bring your video on that because I don't know what to say about that. But this, the murder of Catherine Sesnick is so spellbinding. I mean, it's just, I, I, I can't describe it. I was just hooked from the first episode. And I want to give Netflix a shout out. You know how to find the writers, directors to do your series. Because they bring you prolific information on these people's lives and the misdeeds of the people involved in the case or who have been accused as suspects. And I have to give Netflix a hand. They know how to bring a story. They know how to do documentaries. They know how to do it. I, I mean, they to me, they're outstanding. And Catherine Sesnick, you'll be 77 this year if you lived. And I feel so terrible that no one rooted for you. No one stood by to make sure justice was served so many years ago. But some of your students have come forward who are now older women. And they're fighting for you. And they're going to get to the bottom if they can to get some information on your death. And I hope that something comes about. Even though the main suspect is no longer living. That priest is not living. Joseph Maskell. Or Maskell, however you pronounce it. He is no longer living. So you couldn't bring him to justice because he's dead. But I'm going to tell you, because I don't want to tell you everything. I want you to watch the series and tell me what you think. But I fought Baltimore City. I fought the DA's office, who they were also interviewed. And they played it off as if, well, we only prosecute cases that we have information. We can't go back on, we can't go on a person's word. We have to have evidence that something transpired. Civil suits also ensued and got thrown out by two of the ladies. It's baffling and it's hurtful. And it's really a disgrace to women. Because the Archdiocese has had numerous accusations against the church with priests raping little boys. And I'm sure women as well. And lots of suits have followed from different cities all over the United States. And I just think it was so sad that Baltimore City didn't even want to try to make an effort to see where it could go in prosecuting that priest. Because I think he's guilty. And I also think he's orchestrated the death of Catherine Sesnick. I think he has something to do with her death. I think he either hired some guys to kill her. And or he played a part in it. But I want you to watch it so you can judge for yourself what you think. The information that one of the Jane Doe's brought forward. in feeling like she was a part of the reason that. Miss Sesnick got murdered because she confided in her as a child what he was doing to her at that school. So I want you to watch the documentary and tell me what you think. It is called The Keepers. It is airing on Netflix as I speak. And I want you all to watch it because it's a great documentary. And it just goes to show you how things can get swept up under the rug. How people can get in cahoots with each other. And what I think is most shameful is that this is a church. A denomination. A Catholic Church upholding their priests in wrongdoing and it's sad that this even transpired because maybe Miss Sesnick would be alive today had someone followed through follow through but you can't follow through when you got dead people and people push stuff under the rug and try to act like it never happened but let me tell you what's done in the dark will surely come to the light and if it takes one more year, five more years. I'm praying that the truth will come out. Watch The Keepers on Netflix. And tell me what you think. Drop your comments below. And give me your 411 on what you think happened to Miss Sesnick. Because I am curious in who killed her. And Miss Malecki as well. Because I got a feeling that she's somehow tied into uh, Miss Ses Sesnick's death as well. So, um... Tune in to Netflix. Great network. I'll talk to you guys later. And I'll bring you more shenanigans, honey, because you know I will. Talk to you guys later. Bye.